Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Double Tap on YouTube. I'm Stephen Scott. He's Sean Priest. Hello. Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Have we gone viral yet, Stephen? I, well, do you know, I do have a bit of a rash, but hopefully it'll clean up soon. Uh, I have got <laughs> ointment <laughs> for it, so we should be fine. Classic. Well, hang on. Do you mean YouTube? Of course I mean that there, oh, YouTube. Oh, I see. Well, look, I mean, the first video must have been okay because we're back again, right? So can't have been that yes. bad. We're not cancelled yet. We're back. What are we talking about today? Well, this is a subject that's a little bit close to my heart, shall we say. Oh, um, deep. I like it. Yeah, well, look, look no. I, I have to say, I don't know. How do you feel about sighted people uh, experimenting with what it's like to be blind? Have you heard about this? Uh, well, I've seen it on a, a few occasions. And, you know, I understand the curiosity. Absolutely. No, look, this isn't for fun, right? People aren't going out and, you know, wearing dark glasses or, you know, just putting a blindfold on and heading out into traffic. I mean, that's not advisable. And it's not what people please are actually don't do doing. That. No, don't, no, that's, and that's no, not happening. Please, but Stephen, we need to be responsible here. Please that is never going to happen, I promise you. Thank but, you. But here's the thing. That's your job. You can do all that, right? They can stay. <laughs> right. they, they, listen, it keeps the lawyers okay. awake, all right? So just, you know, whatever. Yes. At least, at least they, they watch this. Um, yeah, that's a few more views. Exactly. Hello, lawyers. So, <laughs> Carry on. Um, no, what happens is sometimes in offices, sometimes in environments, sometimes on courses, there are what's called visual impairment awareness courses that happen. Different parts of the world it can be called different things. But ultimately what happens is sighted people are brought into the room and they're given what's called simulation glasses or sim specs, as they can also be called. And what they do is they simulate what it's like to have different eye conditions. Now, you've got... RP, retinitis pigmentosa. Okay. So you could have a pair of glasses that would replicate the various stages of RP because, of course, it's a condition that deteriorates over time. So you may have a... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to break that to sorry. you. Is this an, Are you not That's aware of this? Unbelievable. Oh, well, sorry. Yes, there you go. quite right. Breaking news. Thank you. Um <laughs> but here's the thing. So on uh, on this particular case, you would have maybe a pair of glasses which show what it's like at the beginning, uh, maybe when you're younger, and then as you get older, how that that condition progresses. Now, mm. with that in mind, uh, you're then giving someone the opportunity to experience that. I, I don't know. I just initially, I've got an issue with that because I think to myself, I really like the idea of people blinding up. Oh, blinding up. I see where you're going with that. I, I don't know. But you can understand the cura curiosity around a disability, mm. though, can't you? Surely. I mean, even the, the main times that I've seen it used are with other members of a visually impaired person's family, so they can get an idea, particularly if you've got a child who's visually impaired. So you can get an idea of exactly the needs that they may need met when it comes to, you know, print size, magnification, or even mobility with a cane, whatever it may be. But I can totally understand how can someone would be, you know, because it's almost the shock value of how do you cope if you can't see? You know, the people always try and look at it as that is their worst case scenario almost, right? Yeah, and I think that's the point, right? So, and again, I want to be very clear on this, although it's, I know we like to have a bit of a fun and carry on about these things. I think the truth is, I, I don't see any malice in this. I think this is all about education. And I, I think that's good. But I think the question here is, is it the right way to educate people? Is this really the right way to educate people about what How our lives are like? It? How else would you do it? Well, this is where a video that came from YouTube got me interested. So a good friend of ours, James Rath, he's known as the blind filmmaker and he's on social media, he's on YouTube and, and he's uh, legally blind. He lives in the States. And James, is, as he's been on our show, he's been on Double Tap, he's been on Access Tech Live, formerly Double Tap TV a few times with us. And um, he did a video recently with, uh, of course, a well-known YouTuber called iJustine. Uh, and he showed her what it was like... Uh, as he saw, you know, how he sees essentially using these kind of simulation glasses. But he did something different in this video that I don't think I've seen before. Let's let's watch the video and uh, we'll talk about it on the other side of this. I was born with blindness and YouTuber iJustine is going to experience what my eyes see while using her iPhone. 
Thanks to accessibility settings found in our phones, computers, and more, us blind folks can interact with our devices like anyone else in a variety of ways. It's like I'm already feeling like the eye fatigue of just the strain of trying to focus. Sometimes all you just need to do is zoom into the display to bring the operating system into focus. I mean, it's wild because seeing you do that without the goggles on, I mean, it just looked like everything was enlarged, and yeah. now I, mean, I can actually see like the apps. I can almost even read the text, and it feels pretty intuitive. Definitely, um, maybe an eye-opening experience. I see what you did there. I Hi, Justine. So... A kind of simple video, and it's one of those YouTube shorts, so, you know, a lot of information packed very tightly into that minute. But mm. what he did there was quite interesting because he showed Justine how to use the iPhone whilst wearing the simulation glasses. Now, why is that transformative? Why is that in 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 interesting to me? Why is that more appealing to me than the ways I've seen it done before? Because the ways I've seen it done before is they ask someone to put these glasses on, like the RP glasses or any other kind of glaucoma or age-related yeah. macular degeneration, whatever it is. They'll ask people to put those glasses on and then they'll ask them to do a task which often they fail at. Okay, so they might ask you to make a cup of tea or they might ask you... To, I see where you're coming to, from. To then. do something yeah. which essentially leads to a challenge that maybe they can't do. And in a way, it's to kind of show you, I mean, the, the purpose of it is to show you the challenge so you, you realise that you end up overfilling your cup and you need to use a liquid level indicator to do it properly, all of that, right? And then you learn the solution. But the problem is that first moment sticks with people. That first, oh my God, I've just spilled water everywhere. That's the bit that's stuck, and most people this is tend so to frightening. Yeah, yes. and and I think a lot of people leave these sessions feeling dejected, feeling this is something that's a negative. Now, look, I'm not getting into the whole is blindness a negative or not, but that's another conversation for another day. But what I do think is interesting here is if people are leaving with a negative experience, can we turn that somehow into a positive? And I think what James Rath has done here with I Justine points towards a solution. And it's technology again that comes as the saviour. And that is that technology, because we can, we, we all know our technology. I mean, you know, Justine certainly knows our technology, right? <laughs> she knows it yep, inside absolutely. out. Absolutely. So, you know, she can take that device. She knows roughly how to use it, but even without vision. She would have a sense of, of what she's looking at. She can put those glasses on. She might not be able to see the screen, but she's able to then listen to the voice, use voiceover, experience what it's like to use a phone without sight. And as you heard, you know, she was able to take a picture. She had a lot of success. And I think that is possibly more powerful and a more powerful way. If you really want to show people what it's like to be blind, you've, I think you've got to show a positive outcome. You've got to show something which tells the person, at the very least, that this isn't the worst possible thing to happen to you. Now, look, I know blindness is challenging. I'm not sitting here saying it's anything else. I know. It's easy. It's easy, apparently. Oh, yeah, it's great fun. Yeah, I love it. Best <laughs> thing ever. And, you know, the thing is the problem with charities, right? Because charities around the world will, will often have two stories. You know, to the blind people, it's we want to be here for you because we know it's challenging. To the outside world, everything's great if you just give us money. And, yes. you know, that's the, that's the dilemma for charities out there. They're trying to promote that. But I think the problem here is that we're often left with a sense, publicly, a sense of negativity that is fostered and continues to be fostered over time. Can technology solve that? Now, in and of itself, no. But with that example, what it shows is that someone like James can sit down with someone like Justine, who's probably never experienced voiceover, and have a chance to try it, whilst at the same time experimenting and understanding a little bit more about what James's vision is like. Now, she will never come away, no one will ever come away really knowing what that experience is like. But what she might come away with is, well, do you know what? This might be challenging, and it certainly is, but at least technology works for me. So that's my take. Hmm, that's an interesting take as well. I did wonder where you were going with this, I, I will be honest, but I, I get it. I totally get it. And I think there is one factor in James's and I Justine's video there that is key to all of these experiences these hey do you know what it's like if you you know got less vision or visually impaired mm. and that is the blind person in the room 
Um, yes. That's the difference. Yes. Because... I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the fact that James is living that life, you know, is visually impaired, it's a huge difference because you do know, okay, this is, yes, there's challenges, but you know what? You, you learn to overcome them or there's this technology in place, this accessibility feature there that means I can use a smartphone and, and everything like that. I think you're absolutely right. There is a danger here that... And I think it, it links in with the charity aspect because I'll, I'll be um, honest with you, I kind of understand the challenge that charities have got because on one hand, it's isn't this almost a pity? Isn't this sad? Mm. Um, you know, they got to bring people in to get you know, uh, to monetize it almost to get funds in, of course, in order to put services in place. So, uh, on one hand, we're playing this "we need help" card, and on the other hand, is hey. I, I, even if you're blind, you can be perfectly independent. You know, there's challenges, but you can work past them. There is life um, uh, uh, when you're visually impaired. That is absolutely fine. So it is a, a balancing act. But I think when it comes to something like this, it's a very interesting you point you bring up there about could it be just too negative? Because for someone who's 2020 vision, fully sighted, putting on some of these SIM specs... It could be frightening, and that you know that alone could be enough to okay. Visual impairment is just a terrifying experience. Yeah, and in the case of depending if we're talking corporate here and on some sort of course, it could give across the um, the attitude that you know what visually impaired people really aren't capable to do certain things. When in reality, I'm perfectly capable of using a computer, a smartphone, or whatever, or doing lots of jobs. Um, whereas, you know, the, the general mainstream perception may be, well, how could a blind person do that? So I think that the key point to all of this is, as a lot of things we talk about, is that actually the conversation with or having the visually impaired person actually involved in the first place. You know, if you watch these videos and you listen to our show often enough, you will learn very quickly that we are not shy to bring up topics that other people might not. And the reason for that is because what we're about here at Double Tab is... You know, this is our lives. This is Sean and I talking about our experiences, our lives. We're not giving you any kind of, you know, diktat here. This is not a case of, well, this is what we should do. This is a conversation that we want you to get involved in because I want to know your take on all this as well. This isn't just about our views, but this is coming from us, okay? And it's important to understand that because, you know, as you've just said, Sean, oftentimes when people are doing these kind of courses, there's no blind people around. There's no one around. No, that's right. Or, and I've I mean, actually been in one of these, I was actually in one where they asked me to wear the glasses. And the argument oh, was made, right. well, maybe it would help you understand. And I'm like, well, the problem, I mean, there's, there's an obvious problem right there, which is it's Double not blind. going to do anything for me, right? It's just going to make, yes. you know, if you take a black spot and stick it over a black spot, nothing's going to change. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, and I'm always, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% convinced that these sim specs are an accurate simulation. How do how do you know? How do we, exactly. How do we know? Well, well, the interesting thing I with the one, that, it, the one that I Jean was, but, uh, I Justine was um, wearing, was I think something that was more te it was more technical than that, and actually be interesting to know more about that technology as well, because this was essentially a pair of almost like VR goggle type headset that she was wearing that right, was putting yes. the, the the different images in front, and that that's something I'm seeing more and more of. In fact. There's a lot of work going into this, not just for um, vision rehab, but also for dementia. There's a lot of work going into this ah, around right. dementia as well and the experience someone may have with dementia. I, I think that, you know, there's that danger, and I said earlier, blinding up, mm. you know, and not to get too controversial here, but, you know, if, if I was to do other things, let's just say, to replicate yeah. another ethnicity or another gender, I think other people might consider that offensive. And I suppose my question is, you know, overall, is this just a little bit offensive or is there a better purpose to it? But then I often say, as, and I have said this many times on my show, and I think it's an important perspective to, to leave us on today, which is if I take the word blind out of any sentence and replace it with the word black or woman, and then I replay that sentence back to myself, does mm. it seem appropriate? So yeah. your thoughts, please. I'd love them. Comment below. And of course, you can email us on the show as well. Feedback at doubletaponair.com. We always try to bring you an interesting 
discussion and interesting perspectives. We'd love to hear yours as well. Uh, for now, though, that's it for today. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Bye bye, YouTube. And <laughs> bye bye, YouTube. And thank you. And don't forget, you can do all the likey, subscribey things <laughs> as well. Hit your bell. Ugh. And don't forget to watch James's and iJustine's video as well. Very good. Yeah, go check them out. Blind Filmmaker and iJustine online.